If your high school teacher or college professor gave you a test on Roger Federer, you'd trust yourself to get an A+, right? I mean, come on, it's Federer, and every tennis buff knows everything there is to know about him. I mean, we all know he retired in 2022, he's married to a woman named Mirka, who is a former tennis player, and he won over 100 singles titles while he played. But there's got to be more to this man. He might as well be called a god of tennis. But that doesn't mean he spends every single hour of his life with a racket in his hand. Well, that's about to change, because today I'll be showing you 10 things that you probably didn't know about Federer. And if you already knew a few of these facts, then uh, you should probably become my secret informant. Let's get right into it. Number 10. Federer had insane anger issues. Now I can guess what you're thinking. Why would I make such unfair accusations against Federer, especially since he's perhaps the calmest player we've ever seen? Federer knew how to handle his outbursts, and it was very rare to see the former tennis star lose his cool. But Roger wasn't always like this. In fact, he was the exact opposite of the person he is now. A younger Roger had a reputation for throwing tantrums and getting pissed over the smallest things. If he had a bad game, the other player better duck because he could throw away his racket in frustration. Interestingly, a younger Roger knew that he had to deal with his anger problems if he really wanted to succeed in the world of tennis. The sport requires a great deal of physical skill and strength, but if your mental game is at an all-time low, then you might as well forget about winning titles. Eventually, Roger would get his reality check at the age of 21, when his childhood coach and friend died in a car accident in South Africa. This was a terrible situation for the former player, but it somehow helped him to assess his character and deal with his demons. He lost a friend, but I'm pretty sure this friend still watches over him and smiles at how far Federer has come. Number 9. A wrestler motivated him to kiss his future wife. Okay, so we have quite the interesting story on our hands. Federer met Mirka, his wife, during the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games, and they were both representing Switzerland. Unfortunately, despite the evident potential and skill of the Swiss team, they lost the third place match. But it appears that Federer had actually won something after all, and it just happened to be Mirka's heart. Now, Federer was just 18 at the time, and he was barely old enough to drink. So it was natural that Mirka, who was 21 at the time, saw him as too young. Anyway, Federer sits with the boys and tells them about his love problems, and everybody had an answer for him. However, it was a wrestler on the Swiss team who had the perfect advice. He told Roger, you kiss her now or you forget about it forever. Roger couldn't imagine losing out on Mirka forever. So despite his shaky hands and pounding heart, he kissed her. And the rest, as they say, is for the history books. Moral of the story, be brave like Roger. Number 8. He's a doctor. Roger isn't the sort of doctor who tears up a body and fixes up the insides. But in 2017, he was awarded with an honorary doctorate from the University of Basel for all he did for his country, home city, and of course, university. During this honorary ceremony, the university just couldn't get over the fact that his charitable work has changed the lives of thousands of children in Africa. They also recognized the fact that he has been a role model for millions of humans across the world. And if a million people turned out to be just like Roger, the world would be a much better place. So the next time you want to mention this former tennis star's name, you better say Dr. Roger Federer. Number 7. His charity work is extensive. Speaking of charities, every tennis buff knows that Federer owns the Roger Federer Foundation. But do you know how extensive the work of this organization really is? Well, for starters, Roger donated millions of dollars to help people who were affected by the deadly Hurricane Katrina in 2005. The next year, he knew he had to top his own record. So he organized a rally with a bunch of other professional players, raised millions of dollars, and just like the previous year, donated every single dollar to the people affected by the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. That's one hell of a kind move, right? Well, Roger was just getting started. A few years later, he organized a match with his friend and former rival, Rafa Nadal, and called it the Match for Africa. At the end of the game, the duo had raised an insane $4 million. But these two weren't going to go home with all that money. Instead, they donated every single cent to charities that focused on education in South Africa. 
Today, we estimate that this money improved the education of over 100,000 students in Africa, and Roger has raised around $60 million in total for charities. I mean, is this the most generous man alive or what? Number 6. He could have been a soccer player. Let's take a moment to really understand what this means. If Roger had turned out to be a footballer instead of a tennis player, what would the tennis world have been like? And who do you think would have dominated? In one of our previous videos, we mentioned that Roger's family gave him the freedom to play any sport he wanted. And although he ended up choosing tennis, it didn't mean that it was the only sport he was good at. You can find the link to that video in the description below. According to his soccer coach at the time, he could have turned out to be a really good soccer player. In fact, his coach believed he might even turn out to be one of the best playmakers in the world of soccer, only if he had chosen to play. Roger is 42 now, so there's really no chance he'd consider playing soccer professionally, but we can't help but think of how badass he could have been. Number 5. He Escaped Military Service in 2003, Federer got the dreaded letter that he had been waiting for his entire life. It was time for his compulsory military service of one year for his home country. He was a 22-year-old player with crazy dreams, and he had only been a pro player for five years. Why did the government have to ruin his chances of being a superstar? Seeing that he had no choice, he dropped his racket and got selected for draft. But, just as he was about to become a full-blown Swiss soldier, he was dismissed because they thought his back really couldn't handle the heat of military service. But how is that even possible? Roger Federer was a sports star, and this meant that his body was perhaps fitter than every other Swiss who got picked. So why did he get rejected? Well, nobody knows. But here's what some critics think. Roger was given special treatment, and that's why he was dismissed. We will perhaps never know why he got booted out, but we are so grateful that he did. But the government wasn't going to allow him to leave without burying their books into him. Right after he got booted out, they made sure that they got a tiny 3% of his taxable income in exchange for not being a soldier. Number 4. He was vegetarian for a while. Roger Federer loves his veggies so much that he ate only that for the first 14 years of his life. He wasn't forced to be a vegetarian by his parents or anyone around him but simply chose to be one as soon as he could tie his shoelaces without any help. But being a tennis player puts heavy weight on your body, so you need more than just veggies to survive. As soon as Federer got into an academy so he could become a professional player, he knew he had no choice but to eat meat, and he's been unable to stop ever since. Number 3. He Likes His Rock Music if I had to guess what genre of music Roger Federer enjoys, never would I have ever guessed rock music. I'm sure a number of us see him as some sort of classical music guy, but Roger instead prefers to unwind with good old rock music. And if you're a fan of ACDC, I've got some exciting news for you. Roger Federer likes this band just as much as you do, and he thinks Angus Young is the next best thing after sliced bread. He loves this band so much that he's hung out with them a couple of times, probably to see if he could get their secret to creating masterpieces. But when it's time to unwind, ACDC is definitely not the only band on that rock playlist. Roger has also mentioned his love for Lenny Kravitz's music and even called Lenny one of his favorite artists of all time. Number 2. He has won cows two times. Okay, hold on a second. Since when did tennis players get cows for winning a title? I mean, what happened to good old dollar bills? Way back in 2003, after winning the Swiss Open, Roger got what is perhaps the strangest prize anyone has ever gotten. A cow. Well, fast forward to 2013, and it was deja mu all over again. The former tennis star got another cow after returning back to the competition. Roger's tennis prowess might be unmatched, but when it comes to managing a cow collection, Federer proves he's just as human as the rest of us. Utterly confused. Eventually, Roger gave these cows to a dairy farmer because he had absolutely no idea what he could do with his new cow friends. Number 1. He's scared of roller coasters. For a guy who hands out losses to other players like he's handing out candies during Halloween, you'd think a guy like that could handle anything, right? Well, not really. As it turns out, the former tennis maestro has a kryptonite. Roller coasters. 
Even though he's able to boss practically anyone around with nothing but a racket and a ball, Roger is too scared of roller coasters to even sit in one. Do you think he'll overcome this fear someday? Well, you know what they say, I guess we'll just have to wait to find out. Phew, that was quite a ride. Let us know if this has changed how you see Roger Federer and what you think about these important facts. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to learn more interesting things about your favorite tennis players.